Good morning, friends. Today I would like to share about taking communion, which is the body and blood or the bread and wine uh, that represents our Lord Jesus Christ, because it's very important when we do this. So I need to kind of take you on a little tour or whatever, um, and we should start at the beginning in Genesis, where God created the earth and how God made everything, including fruit trees and plants. And he put in each plant and tree and flower and everything he basically made its own seed to produce its own kind. So he also made every bird, animal, fish in the seas and put seed in them to produce their own kind. Isn't that awesome? And lastly, God made man, male and female, and put in them seed to produce their own kind. And God told them to multiply and fill the earth, which happened. So if you think about it, with evolution, saying man evolved out of apes or monkeys, that's impossible because monkeys and apes had their own seed to produce their own kind, not humans. And humans couldn't produce anything but humans. God was not only creator, but father of Adam and Eve. He fellowship with them in person as a spirit talking and walking in the garden with them. He was also a righteous judge and made laws that his children had to obey. The main law was not to eat from one tree in the garden called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Man never knew evil up until this point. If they disobeyed their heavenly father, by breaking that law, there was a consequence. To disobey was called sin. And the wages of sin would be death. Since life was in the blood, without the shedding of someone's blood and a death, there was no forgiveness for that sin. And up until sin came into the world, Adam and Eve were perfect, sinless humans. Imagine that. Wow. They walked and talked with God, their heavenly father, who's perfect and sinless. But let's go maybe a few million years before God created the world and man. In heaven, God created angelic beings called angels. And angels were not made to reproduce sexually like mankind. God made them individually one by one. There are armies of angels. And they have their own positions and jobs to carry out for God. The most beautiful angel of all, who was the most intelligent of all, was Lucifer. His name meant angel of light. His position was to be a leader. He led all the angels to sing praises and songs of worship before the throne of God. But one day, sin was found in him, the sin of pride. And he knew there was a seat reserved next to God's throne for someone, of course, it was for God's son, Jesus, but Jesus wouldn't be born to die for many thousands of years in our time. And Satan pridefully, well, Lucifer, before his name was ever Satan, pridefully believed that seat should be his. After all, he was the best and he desired to be like God, to be worshiped like God. But how could something God created think it could be equal to God 
and deserve the worship and praise that only God can have. So Lucifer, as a leader, convinced one third of all God's angels to follow him into this sin. Since God is sinless and perfect in all light, and there's no darkness in God or his kingdom, and the judge of heaven had Michael, the ark warring angel in God's army, cast Lucifer and all the one-third falling angels that followed him out of heaven. Jesus said, thousands of years later, when he walked the earth, I seen Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And Lucifer's name was changed from angel of light to prince of darkness. God did that. God changed his name. And he also has the name Satan, the devil, deceiver, destroyer. And Jesus said he's the father of lies. His fallen army of angels are called demons. Sin entered the world by Satan, and he would carry out his diabolical plan to be worshipped as the god of this world. He deceives the minds of the lost and works at stopping people from coming to God and being saved by Jesus. He deceives man, appearing even as an angel of light, to bring false religions that are not from God or in the Bible or from Jesus. But mankind has always been God's most prized possession. Satan entered into the serpent and conversed with Eve. He put evil accusations in her mind against the creator and her heavenly father. And he does the same today. He's an expert at this. He puts suggestions. Did God say you can't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? God just don't want you to be as smart as him. Hmm. The fruit on that tree looked delicious and Satan's suggestions caused her to want to be like God and the devil, Lucifer, won out. Eve ate the fruit and gave some to her husband, Adam, and repeated those same evil lies into his mind. Up until Satan entered the world, it was sinless and peaceful, but it turned into chaos and super destruction when the devil entered Earth's atmosphere and he became the god of this world causing humanity to obey his evil thoughts. That's why Jesus said, if we continue to stay in his word in the Bible, we would know the truth and be set free from all these lies. Then Father God showed up. God was not only Adam and Eve's creator and merciful loving father, but a righteous judge of his law. He had to carry out judgment for breaking his law. God warned his children if they disobeyed him, the consequences would be death. Life is in the blood. So innocent, an innocent, sinless victim had to die in order for their forgiveness. So God gave them a blood covenant, sinless victim, an animal, which was a temporary sacrifice until the true sacrifice, which is a human, Jesus Christ, would come and be the ultimate sacrifice for mankind's sins. And this ritual was passed down in every generation. So basically, that first lamb that was slain in the garden for Adam and Eve, represented the promise of the coming Savior, Jesus Christ. And Jesus would come to earth to redeem mankind out of Satan's dominion of darkness 
and lead us to God's marvelous kingdom of light. If you want to know how bad an evil sin is, read the end of Isaiah chapter 52 and the whole chapter of Isaiah 53, where the prophet Isaiah said Jesus did not even look human on the cross because he was so torn apart and beat up. I want you to know something. Our biggest enemy is the devil, number one, but then our flesh, because our flesh loves the pleasures of sin. And this is why our flesh cannot go to heaven. It rots in the grave. But our spirit, if we have accepted Jesus and his atonement, our spirit is alive and it never dies. And so when our flesh dies, our body, our spirit leaves it and goes straight to heaven. But if Jesus has not come into your life, you won't go to heaven. You go to the opposite place, which is hell. But God hid this master plan to save humanity through Christ from the angels, all of them. Because if Lucifer and his fallen angels ever knew that Jesus was going to die for sinners, so we could all go to heaven? These satanic evil beings would never have moved on evil men to crucify and kill the Lord of glory. After creation and the fall of man, down throughout a thousands of years of time, God chose the Israelites to be his people. They would usher in the Savior. And they had to obey God and use animal blood sacrifices to cleanse their sins. They had to obey all God's laws that God gave to Moses. But first, they were slaves in Egypt for 500 years until God sent Moses as a deliverer. Now we're getting close to explaining about communion and why it's important for us to receive communion. On the night the Israelites would leave Egypt, God commanded Moses to have each household kill a sacrificial lamb and apply its blood on the doorposts of their houses. The last of the 10 plagues was about to take place with an angel of death. Wherever the blood of the lamb was on the house, the death-destroying angel had to pass over it. It could not touch those in that house. But all the Egyptians who didn't know God, their firstborn sons died that night in their houses because that sacrificial blood for sin was not on their houses. The Israelites left Egypt that night in a hurry so they could not bake their bread with leaven or yeast because you have to wait till that leaven or yeast rises. The bread was unleavened. So feast in remembrance of their exodus from Egypt began with God's command after they left Egypt. The feasts were called Passover, and unleavened bread. Now let's swing over to about 500 years later in Israel. God has appointed times in his plans and God sent his angel named Gabriel with a message to a young Jewish virgin named Mary. She was to be the mother of the savior and Jesus could not be born from Adam's fallen sinful race like all of us. The Savior had to be born without sin. If he was to die for us sinners, God the Creator came upon the Virgin Mary and overshadowed her, and the seed God put in her womb was called the sinless Son of God. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, as the Jewish prophets foretold. 
He grew up in Nazareth and began his preaching ministry when he was 30 years old. When he was 33, he was about to die, and it was the celebration of the Feast of Passover and unleavened bread. And he sat with his disciples and basically told them this. I know since our ancestors came out of Egypt, we celebrate the Passover and unleavened bread, remembering Moses bringing us out of Egyptian slavery. So we eat the lamb that we slay and apply its blood on our houses. And we don't eat any bread with leaven to remember how we didn't have time to leaven or have the yeast rise when we bake the bread but I just couldn't wait to eat this Passover meal with you because from now on, I want you to remember me, not Egypt. I am the real lamb slain for your sins and the sins of the whole world. I am the real bread that came down from heaven with no leaven of sin. I want you to remember my body that was broken for you. And right now, I'd like to pause because to take Holy Communion, we use the matzah bread or a pita bread that has no leaven in it, which is probably even more like what Jesus used today when we take communion, the matzah bread is really interesting because this is uh, the uh, kosher for the Jewish people on Passover. And let's take a look at this. The brown spots on it represent the bruises that Jesus took. He was punched and beat. Then you see the little holes which the Isaiah said he was pierced for our transgressions. And you see the stripes because Jesus took 39 lashes across his back and buttocks that ripped his skin apart. And 39 root causes of every disease is basically what Jesus paid for. And then we have the bread that has no leaven because Jesus had no leaven of sin. And so when Jesus broke the bread like this, he was saying, from now on, I want you to remember this communion bread represents me. You think about me when you take communion, what I did for you. My body was broken for you. And then the Lord Jesus said, as he picked up the cup to drink the wine, and I'm just gonna pour a little bit of this juice in it, which represents the grapes, the wine. Jesus said, when he took the cup of wine, I want you to remember me, that this cup represents my blood that was poured out for you. When you drink this, think about me. That's where communion, the, the um, celebration or the Holy Eucharist as Catholics would call it, come into play. It all had to do with the body of Jesus that was slain, the bread and the wine representing his body and his blood poured out for our sins. When we partake of that communion, we're to examine our conscience and see if we need to confess our sins first. If, if there's anything that we've done that needs Jesus' blood to wash it away, because he is our great high priest. My friends, when you receive Jesus, the true lamb of God and his blood atonement to wash away your sins. God's Holy Spirit will come to live inside of your spirit and you will be born again from God. 
you will have a new birth in your spirit that makes you a son of God. It, there is no male or female in your spirit. God just calls us his sons. That makes you a citizen of God's kingdom in heaven if you've been born from God. So you have a dual citizenship, one on earth, wherever you were born, and a citizenship in heaven because you were born from your creator, God. And when you die, your citizenship on earth expires, but your citizenship in heaven will never expire because your spirit will never die. It was created in the image and likeness of God who lives forever. Your sins are washed in Jesus' blood. His blood is on you, on your house, on you, your temple. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God Almighty, the creator, and Jesus, his son, now lives in you. As citizens of earth, we have benefits. And as citizens of heaven, we have benefits. Psalm 103 tells us, do not forget all our benefits. For God forgives all our sins. He heals all our diseases. He redeems our life from the pit of hell. He crowns us with his love and compassion. He satisfies our life with good things so our youth is renewed like an eagle. And in another place, he says he will satisfy us with long life. As a citizen of the United States of America, in order to receive your benefits, do you, you must find out what they are to receive them. The same way you must find out what the benefits are for being a citizen of heaven. Communion is very important. You can take communion at home, buying the matzo crackers and the grape juice to put yourself in remembrance of what Jesus went through to bring you back to God, to forgive your sins he had to die. He had to pay that penalty. So I hope that you can receive him into your heart and life today. What a beautiful message that Pastor Marilyn brought us this week. And, you know, I was thinking before she was going to minister today on how, you know, each week we bring a little bit of a different message, a topic to encourage you. Um, but in scripture, it talks about the holy place, which is the place where we can really go in and, and be really close to the Lord, right? And I thought how Pastor Marilyn has a way of bringing us from that outer court to the inner court about those deeper understandings in the scripture of, you know, sometimes you just take communion, think, oh, it's a ritual. It's what I do. But why am I doing this? What, what does it even mean, right? And so that today is what we learned. So listen, take what she says and you can go right into Walmart and buy the those matzos or any store really they you know the cracker and the juice and just do it make it a ritual in your life now knowing and understanding the benefits of it remember us in your giving this week when you go online to laborloveusa.org or simply mail it into 3215 north 5th street in east stroudsburg pennsylvania 18301 you Thank you.
Nothing.